So the purpose of this is to demonstrate how to use draftmancer.com to facilitate drafting uh, in any draft I host, but also any kind of draft that you may be interested in hosting as well. Or any, well, any draft on the website, right? For those unfamiliar, this is draftmancer.com. It is run by Sen, who is an exceptional person who designed this website. Uh, it is free to use. It, <clears throat> if you uh, hook them up on PayPal, that would be kind. Uh, they are extremely responsive, always open to new ideas. And this, even in the last year that I've used this, this app has developed quite significantly. You can do all kinds of things with it. You can draft any kind of uh, set that exists in Magic. You can make chaos drafts of different kinds. They're using the settings, you can approximate Supreme Draft. You can have special draft things where you have more than 15 or fewer than 15. You can do team drafts. It's really, really customizable. But for our purposes, what we're going to be doing is cube drafting. Now, I'm not going to go over necessarily how to set up a draft because that's not the purpose of this. But uh, you can do it. There's an import from Cube Cobra, and you can link your own cube from there. But as far as the rest of these settings, I would suggest taking some time to experiment with them. Even I have not done it all of them, you know, and then they, they change. So I don't, I'm not sure of any new ones that are here. But uh, the way it will work whenever I host a draft is that it will be held on this website and you will need a link to uh, the draft. Now it's just a URL. There's nothing special about this. And I'm gonna post the link in my Discord. If someone were to direct message you this or I don't know, does anyone use ICQ? No. but. Regardless, if you got this link and you went to, you went to your browser to put in this link, it, you would get into the draft. This entire app is browser-based. You do not need an account and you don't need to log in at all. It just tracks by your name. And there are some other important things that it tracks by your name. It's, it, all your previous drafts are, I believe, stored locally so you can consult those. There's a lot of fun things you can do with those. Maybe we'll get a second to look at them uh, later on. But the only important thing, well, there's a couple of things. But the most important thing is that you have your name here. This will identify you. If you are drafting with us, please use your Magic Online handle or username as your name here. That way I know how to find you, right? Because if you put something different here, I might not be uh, friends with you on Magic Online, so I don't know where to send the cards. But uh, once you have this in here, you the session ID is important. for This will identify the draft that you are in. Of course, if you went to here through a URL link, and then you'll already have this filled in, it's fine. So finally there will be you and then whoever else is drafting it here. And it will look like this. Right? We're gonna go ahead and link my cube here. We're gonna import from cube cover. This is a cube we've been drafting lately, so we'll use this for the little demo here. As a drafter, you will not have to do anything really beyond this point. In fact, you won't even have to do what I just did. Before the draft starts, there will be a ready check and you press this button. Well, I will press this button and then a little pop-up will appear here saying, are you ready to go? You click OK, a check mark will appear by your name and that way, whoever the draft organizer is will know that everyone is sitting at the at the PC, presumably, or you know has the browser open and is ready to go. Um, so let's pretend that has happened and we're gonna add seven bots in here this part's gonna take just a minute or two as I'm gonna to have to speed through this draft. Now there can be settings for me. Ah, I just realized. There can be settings for, what are they talking about? Timers, so be aware of that. I generally don't run with a timer, but it could be necessary at some point. I'm not actually thinking about any of these picks. You could argue I never think about my picks and I would not necessarily disagree with you. But regardless, I'm definitely not thinking about them here. My whole purpose of this is to just get the deck. Thankfully, the bots are fast drafters. They don't take a lot of time to think either. Actually, this deck looks kind of good, right? At minimum, it's just white and red cards. How bad could that be? I'll take better last wave. Path, I don't know, bodyguard. Inspector. What are the odds of this deck at 3-0? Sizable. Almost there. Rector. Rector's not going to do it. Fable. Sure. I don't know. This guy? Anyways, we are slowly but surely getting to the end of the draft here. Unfortunately, our land situation is bad. But again, we're not actually with Sacred Foundry. We're not actually going to play this deck, so it doesn't matter. 
Erdo? Sure. Ah, another Boris land. Almost done. Ooh, another Boris land. I think this deck is quite good, for what it's worth. But, uh, again, who cares? When you're done with the draft, it will look like this. I, I forgot to mention, when you are drafting, you can move cards into your sideboard. You can change the layout to change the number of columns you have. And uh, you can set it to have two rows if you like to separate your lands and spells. I know that's kind of an old-fashioned thing, I think, but I don't do it anymore, but I used to. Anyway, uh, I prefer to deck build as I'm drafting. Some people don't, I think. Whatever works for you. But anyways, it's going to have this here. And there's a couple different ways to get your deck list from here. You can export as uh, mtgo.deck. And that will download the .deck file. This has ups and downs to it. Sometimes there are cards that ha are problematic that are bugged in one way or another, and the .deck file will end up missing that card. So there is another way you can do this. And let's get rid of that. You can export, and you can go to card names, and that will get like a raw text copy to your clipboard. And then you can open up a notepad file, and then you can save this in tutorials. You can save it wherever you want, but we're just going to call this deck tutorial in the tutorial folder that I have. And so uh, now we have the deck ready to go. At this point, I will be gathering all the cards. Whoever is running the draft will be gathering all the cards. And you can begin to build your deck regardless if you have the cards or not. So I'm going to act for a second like you haven't played much constructed on Magic Online. And a lot of us spend our time in this tab and not in any other tab. So we're going to go over to collection. This is, you, you know this, but this is this is where all of our cards that we own are and where you can build your decks. Uh, like I said, a lot of us are limited players, so some of the functionality here is a little less explored. If we want to add a deck, we go down to this bottom left icon, click add deck. It's going to ask you a couple different things you can do. This. You can either make the deck from scratch, <clears throat> which will take you extra time, but you hypothetically could do it. Uh, but we're going to import the file here. And then I'm going to go to Tutorial, where I have this saved. One thing is that the default on MTGO at the moment is to Freeform Vanguard. Let's change this to Freeform. That's going to cause an issue if you have a Freeform Vanguard. So the deck will appear here. And if you, there's a couple different ways to import here. Some of them lead you having a completed deck. Some of them have the whole deck in the, in the pool here, and you have to build your sideboard and so on. I want to demonstrate a couple things here if you're not familiar with the deck builder. Let's go to uh, Porto Baggins. So sometimes, you can see with Guardian Scale Lord, there are just like a hashed border around it. That can happen if you don't own a card in one way or another. It may be when you first import your deck that a lot of the cards have that because you don't own the cards, right? I happen to own all the cards in the cube, so they don't appear that way to me. There's a reason that this one appeared this way. But just to demonstrate here, there are there may be a hash border. You can't fix this until you get the cards in your possession, but once you have the cards, you can right-click and then update with versions and collection. And then it will just replace everything. Oh, Shaman, you didn't give me back the scaler. That's fine. Um, it will replace all the cards that you have in your collection that are different versions. Magic Online is very particular about tracking versions, uh, and it will be very meaningful as uh, the draft progresses. So in order to get a legal deck, I'll have to take this out. There will be a little caution triangle here that says if your deck is playable or not. You can right-click on it to say see why. In this case, it'll say deck contains cards not in your collection. But once you've got that all figured out, you've got a lands in here. One thing is when you're drafting, the way we do it, um, you're not allowed to add basics in your deck in between rounds. There's no button to do so. It's not that you're not allowed to, it's just there's no mechanical way to do it. So if you intend to have uh, some kind of transformational sideboard or different sideboarding options, make sure you put basics in your sideboard. Otherwise, they will not be available to you. It's just the way it works. I've had that bite me more than a few times. But here we have our 44 card deck. So once the deck is completed, all matches that we play are done in con under the Constructed tab, which is a little counterintuitive, but because we're using a deck that we built in the Collection tab, that we can we play it in Constructed. 
and then a freeform tournament practice. Once you're here, you can either you change your deck up here, or you can't see it. Okay. Up in the top right, there will be a button that says change deck. I only have one deck available at the moment because I just deleted all the decks I have. And uh, so it's automatically selected. It will select the last deck you worked on, but if it's not for some reason, make sure you change the deck up here. There's a good number of times someone loads the wrong deck and then they have to concede the match and it's kind of just extra time. It doesn't have to be used. But once the deck is selected, you can either join a game that's existing or you can create a game. And you can put your opponent's name here if you know who that is. All pairings will be posted in the Discord. Make sure that you have anyone can join turned on and allow watchers turned on. The reason to turn on allow watchers is if you're in a team draft, your teammates can watch. Or if we're streaming, then I can watch your game. And we can watch it on the stream. It's a fun time. You play your matches. You report. Um, you can report here. Uh, it's a little awkward because, one, these people aren't in the draft. But pretend this looks like the bracket from the draft you're in. You can manipulate your results on here by just changing up and down here. You can actually change any ones, but just change yours, please. As a corollary to this, there will you will see a round two, but the updated the brackets are dynamic in this, and whenever someone enters a result in here, it's going to change the bracket in, in round two. So if you start to play the match from round two before everyone enters their results you may be playing the wrong opponent. So you'll have to wait until all the matches are done from uh, round one, and then you can play round two. You know, just hang out chill, come by and watch the stream. So once you finish the draft, you need to get the cards back to whoever sent you the cards. In this case, we're talking about myself. So there's a couple ways to do that. The, I will post the cards in, I will post the dot deck files in Discord. And there will be two Discords as of yesterday, there's the live drafts, uh, no, sorry, there's pickup drafts and there's scheduled drafts. And if we're doing these scheduled drafts, so the deck list will be posted at scheduled drafts. You will use that .deck file, and I, I can create one here. There we go. Don't, don't do what I just did, but uh, there will be a .deck file, and it'll be posted in Discord. Once you've downloaded that, disc, that file, go to the bottom left here, click on Add Binders, on import and then click on the dot deck file that was provided in the discord you have to use the one that was provided in the discord unless you were very meticulous about the exact versions that i gave you when you built your dot deck file but the easiest way by far is to use the one that's in the dot deck, that is in the discord because if you make a dot deck file and it has a different art mother of runes in it and then you try to offer that deck that binder to me in a trade it just won't show me Mother of Runes, and so you'll be missing cards in the trade. And then I can't... It, it takes a little bit of time to sort that out. Um, there are other ways to get all the cards, but they take more time. And uh, I want this to go as quickly as possible as trading cards. If we are all on top of it, it can be done in five minutes. Uh, if there are some snags, it can take quite a while. But it's easy to do once you know the process, so there's really not a ton to worry about. Finally... Once you have that binder created, I would much prefer it if you offer me a trade rather than have myself trade with you. And in order to do that, just find me on your friends list or, yeah, it'd be easiest that way. Right click my name and click trade and then click the binder that you have associated with that .deck file. At which point I will take all the cards from you and we'll be good to go. If you're unfamiliar with trading, it's hard for me to show you here, but when you, let's just trade with GoPoss maybe. Don't reset. You can s select all of the cards at the same time, rather than one by one. And the way you do that is in the trade window that comes up. Aha, it worked. Okay. You'll click on one card, just click on any card there and hit Control A and it will select every card and then you drag them down in the window. Magic Online is not going to let me trade 20,000 cards at one time, so there's a maximum number of 400 cards you can trade. Uh, this includes tickets, really. But uh, it'll just be 45, you know. And then just hit Submit and then Confirm. But I'm not going to buy these cards, <laughs> so we'll just cancel it. 
as far as I can remember, that covers the entirety of drafting, getting cards, building decks, playing matches, and returning cards. I will probably revise this again at some point, but it's good enough for now. So, cool. All right, and recording.